Monday, August 8th, 2022. Sorry I missed last week's update. I've been uh, busy as always, probably extra busy last week. Uh, kind of been a busy last couple of weeks. So on one hand, the beans are still doing really, really good. I'm still miracle growing them every week. They obviously, at least in my scenario, need that. We will see if I if I over fertilize them to the point to where they never mature. But uh, they're doing a lot better. It's not a nice, pretty, full rack like the cucumbers are on the cucumber trellis side. That middle one's crested. It actually crested and went about a couple feet past. I had to curl it back down and in. But yeah, last week was a tough week. <clears throat> so my uh, my cherries, my super sweet 100s. I shouldn't have to check the tag at this point, but I do. Good news is we're at like eight and a half feet, okay? The bad news is our little friends, the, uh, the hornworms, came back not last week, but the week before. So I made my Sunday video. Everything was going good. Monday went without a hitch. Tuesday morning, I come out like 7, 7.30. I'm going to water them, and what do I have going on? My number one branch, my biggest branch, just absolutely destroyed with a hornworm the size of my finger. You know, so that's kind of how the day kick started. I got that one off, did a quick check, found a couple more. Well, before I knew it, by the end of that day, I had found six hornworms throughout the plants. I want to say three of them that were on this plant. And then by the next day, I had five, and it was like, it was like 11 hornworms. It may have even been like 12. I can't even remember now. In a two-day period, I was just, I was getting nailed, you know. So, obviously, you know, that last time I had them, they laid eggs under the leaves. And, you know, they all, what would you say, came out of their little larvae state and were crawling around and eating up my plants. But the bad news, <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm congested. The bad news is they took like three out of my five and they clipped my top so they stopped growing. The good news is I've let some suckers take over and what you're seeing now are suckers that took over and shot up. Probably had like two or three days where the plant was in shock. I mean, it got hit pretty bad. It's kind of hard to see now because everything's kind of come back. But there was a few days there where this plant was looking kind of like a skeleton. And you know, that's my baby this year. So far it's been my best performer and it's the only one that even with this heat, it just keeps flowering and giving me cherries and... But yeah, stuff like that absolutely drives me nuts. So it was a rough week. Cherokee purple still kind of hanging in there. I took that one branch off that looks like it was diseased, and I, I think I got it just in time. Other than the fact that it's not much more than probably three and a half, four feet tall, it's hanging in there. <clears throat> the red beefsteak. That'll be the first one. It's small. It's about like a little bit smaller than a pool uh, billiards ball. Get a hand reference on there. But that'll be getting picked today. I'll go ahead and, before it splits or anything, definitely getting the uh, the edge wilt. But it's hanging in there. I'm trying to remember. No, I don't. I think this is the only plant that knock on wood has not had any hornworms. It's completely made it all on its own without without any any insect issues. The, uh, the better boy, as you could tell, got hit pretty hard on it. I want to say, let me see here. No, the better boy didn't lose any tips. No, it did lose a tip. That's right, it lost a tip in here. And I let a sucker go to try to make up. But as you could tell, it's, I think even on the last video, I had already lost that tip prior to this last hornworm outbreak. But... On this side, you know, there's my reach. It's it's a good six inches past my reach. 
<clears throat> we're gonna have that tomato I'm gonna pick today I probably should have picked it a couple days ago but I wanted to leave it for the video and let this one get pretty darn truly vine ripened but as you know it's uh down in the south if you don't have the the crack resistant thick skins this is what happens if you leave them too long but really you don't have to cut a whole lot of that out you still get quite a bit of tomato you just kind of notch it out but i i want to try one that instead of letting it sit up for a couple of days you know i can just let it go all the way this one will be ready speaking of the uh the better boy i can show you a picture of the the last one i cut i'll go ahead and throw those in now the big boy doing that same thing where it's you know getting a little more browning on the edges of the leaves the new leaf growth doesn't really do that <clears throat> but it's hanging in there it got hit really hard by the hornworms that was one of them I don't know how easy that is to tell from my camera angle but which one was it here I know at one point it crested the top on this but then it started doing really good as a matter of fact I, I want to say it crested the top but then it was able to come back to life so when he when the worm nubbed it out he must have left just enough for it to be able to recuperate stunted for a few days started going isn't too far behind that one still up there pretty good though good six inches above my hand on my five, five foot eight extended reach The uh, pink brandy wine, it's still hanging in there. Everything's starting to kind of do that with the leaves, but I mean, we're in August now. You know, the heat's piping. We've had a couple, couple mild days, and that's about it. Just full-fledged humidity. <clears throat> that one's still very slow growing, but I'm holding out on it. Again, we want to make this last through August, and then when the temperatures start coming down, I'm going to switch from the miracle Grow back to the Master Blend, which is going to be the phosphorus and the potassium, and we're going to focus on, on fruit. But we're not getting many flowers at all because I've just been basically nitrogen in it, which is the miracle Grow, just to try to keep them going. So I finally depleted my tin that I bought in the beginning of last year. I say tin, but it's really a plastic tin wannabe but it's kind of nice because you still get the lid well I can't find that anymore so what I am finding is this which as you can see has gone down from uh, five pounds to four pounds so hopefully uh, the, this comes back but I think they're trying to uh, you know do less and sell for more this was 13 bucks and I want to say that was 11 back when I bought it the good news and I kind of peeked in it as I was driving home. Sorry about the bad camera angle. It still comes with a scooper. <clears throat> Neither unit tells you that it comes with it. But I was kind of hoping to get one. I'd like to get a few more over time. But this is going to be good for that chicken crap fertilizer. That's so stinky that I want to isolate it to its own stuff. But let's see if it's still four tubes. Again, sorry, I'm doing this with one hand. Okay, so it's still four tubes. They just managed to take out a, a quarter of a pound from each tube, it looks like. Let me put you on pause. So yeah, they're still tubes. They're shaped a little different. They're a little bit shorter as opposed to narrower and taller. And of course, they hold less. So five pounds to four pounds, what do they call that, shrinkflation? Where you shrink it, make it look like it's the same size, and then charge more? Thrilling, huh? At least it's generally cheap. But you figure I'm using a lot more this year. 
because I'm holding off on the master blend until I get to where I want to have everything flower. And I am basically using this larger one. Was that a tablespoon? They don't exactly tell you. On 18 plants. <clears throat> so I'm starting to go through it a little bit more. I mean, it still goes a long ways. So the biggest difference you're going to see from the last update, a lot more jute strings. After, I mean, that was such a close call with losing, you know, plant height that I said, you know what, we're going to start letting the suckers go. And I want a bunch of suckers and a bunch more branches and I'm going to jute string them up. And then, you know, I'm kind of diversifying my eggs out of one basket so that if a couple of them get hornwormed, I'm still good to go. I don't want to just have, you know, two main arteries and then, you know, one gets hornwormed and just like that, 50% of my growth is over. Because really, this is all about, you know, growing large tomatoes in pots because people say you can't do that. But as you could see, everything's hit six foot except for my Cherokee purple. So, I mean, we're growing big tomatoes in pots. You know, and we're diversifying. We got different, you know, plant species, species that are not designed to thrive here in the hot south in Arkansas. As far as the cucumbers, still looking pretty good. Everything's crested over the top at this point. I had to kind of help it with jute string because they would want to go straight up and then kind of come back towards me. <clears throat> so I kind of jute stringed them so that, you know, they would form their arc and now they're coming back down. They've come down about two feet, roughly. I'd say that one on the far right came about two and a half feet. And we've been having growth, not as good as in the back, but you could see that one. There, there's some all around here, but we've been eating off it. Not as much as we're getting on the back lot, but we're definitely getting them. We got that one huge one that was like, you can actually maybe see there's another one growing right, right in there. But we had a huge one right up in that corner and I kind of let it go because it was like freakishly big. Especially since, you know, these burpless are supposed to only get like six inches. But I let it go and it was huge. But I'll go ahead and show you that picture now. So that's been my biggest one. Not that it's ideal to grow them big. I just kind of wanted to see if I let it go what it would do. And then, you know, it started getting a little too white and a little too overextended. Of course, it didn't taste that good. We had to peel quite a, a lot of it to get down to where the, the center tasted okay. They, even after a, a light peel, it just, the edges were really bitter. But all the rest of them have been good. <clears throat> it's doing its own little crazy thing. It's growing into my my siding here i'm just gonna kind of let it go i may reroute that down there but i may let that one go you can also see it's starting to climb up my shutters over there i'll probably let that go see if what it does but yeah definitely hanging in there again if i would have had a drip system on this i'd be in a lot better shape that box just is not good at retaining water in the heat especially when that afternoon sun comes out Okay, to the back, which has been, you know, my, my champion this year as far as giving us vegetables. We, we've had quite a few cucumbers and just a ton of squash and a ton of zucchini. And then, you know, we started getting the... Uh, powdered mildew <clears throat> and then that started kind of getting out of control so finally I just I went ahead I had to do a good weeding anyways I got rid of the worst leaves I weeded everything as you can tell it's a lot more skimpy 
and I did that about a week ago. Those have grown since that last week. I, I think my wife's picked five or six cucumbers since then. Still got Jared's little gourd going. I gotta get some of those leaves out of there. I, I've been too lazy, I haven't moved the pile. Between leaves I raked up <clears throat> in the area and under those leaves are all the weeds and leaves and etc. But basically, we did a lot of clipping, and we, my wife and I have been trying to spray it down every day with the Dawn dish soap and baking soda mixture, which is definitely helping. You know, I should probably Google it. Now, my wife trims them down by the base, and what I've tried doing is trimming it more to the top at the leaf so the hole's not exposed because these, you know, they got those big, the size of my thing, finger, uh, stalks that are hollow <clears throat> and when you open them up it's just full of condensation and it dries up as soon as you do that so I think my way is better I like I said I really should google it uh, as soon as my wife did a lot of that trimming they all laid down they're growing fine and they're still making plenty of squash and stuff they just all laid down and that didn't really happen until the heavy trimming. But now that it's weeded and it's laying down, you can see the uh, where it, you know the base is, which makes it a lot easier for fertilizing. I fertilized about seven o'clock this morning. I'm still giving all my tomatoes and everything, uh, you know, the uh, the big scooper on the Miracle Grow. And I'm giving these what I'm doing on these because I'm just not trusting the sprayers right now. I'm taking like a party cup and I'm uh, putting one big scoop in there and uh, basically I, I slowly in about a six to eight inch diameter let it wick up around each plant. So that's quite a few because I got three, six, nine and then another nine over there counting my wife's avocado plant. So it's quite a lot of miracle grow. You know, it takes a good hour to do all that. Let's see, I know my wife picked a lot yesterday, but I'm sure there's probably something I can find you here. Of course, they're gonna hide while I'm on camera. But there, there's been a lot of good pickings. Yeah, right now I'm not seeing them, but they're probably hiding. Look how long that one right there is getting. That's about three and a half feet. But they're hanging in there. It's a lot more manageable now that I weeded it. But yeah, let me go ahead and give you a couple pictures of what we've been pulling out of here. But I guess that's about it for this update. I'm sure I forgot to mention something. Uh, I'm going to go back. It's been a couple weeks now. Oh, excuse me. <coughs> but I want to go back and add a little bit of that chicken poo-poo. Because, you know, ironically, around the time I did that was also when all this took off. But I had also just started, you know, miracle growing it also. So it's really hard to say. I probably should have stuck with one just to, to know what exactly worked or if it was the combination. But, you know, just fighting that powdery mildew. Uh, you know, I forgot I was going to slip it in, but I'll show you what everything looked like right before we cleaned it up. But yeah, that's what it looked like. So basically we're just, you know, we're plucking the bad leaves. We keep spraying. It definitely looks like it's getting better. So they just got a fresh dose of miracle Grow this morning. 
we'll see if everything picks up. I'm sure my wife will probably be picking this cucumber. Yeah, that's getting pretty big. That's sitting at about 10 to 12 inches, so. There's your update. Again, sorry I missed last week's update. But trying to show you how to grow large tomatoes.